thanks for a nice introduction. Good morning, everybody. Don't be scared by the title because it's very long, but I will try to keep the presentation quite short. Okay, so um, this is a summary of the presentation. Uh, first of all, I would like to introduce the topic of uh, energy harvesting and uh, uh, related to the Internet of Things application scenario. And uh, after that, I will introduce actually the uh, novel design that we develop at, uh, at our institution in Italy uh, by uh, highlighting the working principle, the microfabrication technique, uh, and uh, some simulation and preliminary uh, experimental results that we have. Okay, so um, the environment uh, available today, let's say with uh, all the human interaction with it, is quite rich of uh, uh, energy sources. Uh, the main one that we can identify are basically four and are uh, light, both uh, uh, natural solar light and artificial illumination, heat, uh, let's say human generated and also available uh, naturally in the environment, uh, vibrations and RF waves. So uh, the focus of, the, of this uh, work is uh, of course on, uh, on vibrations. And uh, to this regard, it is interesting to see which are the typical um, power levels which are available for all these different sources. And if we look at vibrations, uh, dividing them in human generated and industrial, we see that the density of power uh, is quite low, but is comparable with other sources because, for example, Concerning light, uh, the density is very high if we are working outdoor, in, in an outdoor scenario, but it drops uh, quite significantly in the indoor uh, environments. Uh, also, the thermal generation is quite uh, efficient in industrial environments, but it drops uh, quite uh, significantly in uh, human, uh, let's say, thermal gradient. So, um, vibrations actually are... Um, quite uh, widespread in the environment and they can be <coughs> used quite efficiently to generate power. Of course, it's also interesting to see how it, different sources can be combined with different converters. Um, still talking about vibrations, uh, uh, what we uh, um, witnessed in the, in the last year in the research and industrial environment is actually an effort for a miniaturization of devices. Uh, here I reported just a few examples. This is a perpetual commercially available uh, electromagnetic uh, um, converter, which is the same size as an apple. Um, of course, uh, as we shrink down with uh, dimension uh, and volume, we also reduce the power uh, that we can harvest. And today there is a quite um, a large interest in the uh, utilization of MEMS, uh, MEMS technology for the realization of converters. There are already, um, apart from, let's say, this uh, specific uh, device, which is our concept, there are already some commercially available uh, MEMS-based converters, which perform quite good. On the other hand, um, it's interesting also to look at which are the um, power demands for all these sensors uh, application, because in this case you can see some uh, reference application with increasing levels of power required, starting from uh, uh, wristwatch, uh, medical uh, pacemakers, uh, body area networks, which are quite interesting in the medical application fields, and ramping up to mobile phones. So what one should uh, keep in mind is always which is the specific power requirement imposed by a certain application. Because many people, when, when I'm discussing about uh, MEMS uh, implementation of energy harvester, they are always arguing about the fact that you are shrinking down the dimension, so you are also reducing the uh, power that you can harvest. But it depends uh, on which application you are looking at. Because if we consider the Internet of Things scenario, uh, where we actually need a very distributed power, uh, distributed sensing capabilities, it is more important to have less power since we are also working with ultra low power electronics and so on, but more integration uh, in such a way that it would be pointless if we have a very tiny sensor 
to use, uh, uh, let's say, the perpetuum converter, which is big like uh, an apple. Because, of course, you cannot uh, distribute the sensing function as you would like uh, to have uh, to realize all the smart buildings, uh, factories of the future, and smart cities concepts. Okay, so uh, given this, uh, let's say, introduction, um, this is uh, the design concept that we uh, developed. Um, you can see a 3D schematic here of the top view and bottom view of, uh, of the device. Uh, we name it four leaf clover because actually it looks like <laughs> four leaf clover. Um, um, basically, we have a surrounding silicon frame which is keeping uh, a circular shape, the mechanical resonator suspended. Um, if we look in the bottom view of, um, of the device, it is composed of four petals. Uh, of uh, silicon with different height, uh, so that we have, let's say, thin membrane, uh, which is of course deformable, uh, a proof mass, then another external spring area, and again, a peripheral proof mass. This uh, mm, means that actually what we have here are four uh, double cascaded spring mass system, which are kept, uh, let's say, suspended to the frame by means of these tapered suspensions or also just straight beam suspension. We have different designs. So the idea is not only the one of, uh, uh, say, uh, realizing a quite fancy shape of the device, but is actually um, the underlying idea is to overcome a limitation of the standard cantilever-based harvesters, which is the narrow band operation. Because typically when you have uh, um, a cantilever type converter, uh, you have an efficient uh, conversion of energy just around the uh, fundamental uh, mechanical resonant frequency. And this is actually a limitation if we want to use this converter in an environment where there are different sources of vibration at different frequencies. So what we actually tried to do um, was to uh, think about a mechanical uh, resonating structure with several resonant modes, um, most of which can be used, can be efficient for the piezoelectric conversion of energy, in such a way to have a, a device which can be operated on a wider band of, um, of vibrations. For what concerns the technology, I have to say that uh, this preliminary work was done in collaboration with the Technical University of Vienna. So actually the devices were, uh, the first samples were fabricated in, uh, in Austria. Uh, the technology is quite straightforward because we start from SOI 4 inch silicon wafers, uh, on top of which we deposited, we evaporated the first uh, um, a metal layer which acts as a um, bottom electrode. Then we deposit, we actually sputter an aluminum nitride layer of thickness varying between 500 nanometers up to uh, one micron. Then we evaporated a top, uh, metallic top, uh, top electrode. And then we define the mechanical structure, so the silicon with two different thicknesses, uh, by means of deep reactive ion etching, performed on the back side of the wafer and then on the front side to release the whole uh, moving structure. Um, this slide reports the, the first comparisons uh, between uh, simulations and measurements, because I have to say that we perform a simulation with the ANSYS workbench multiphysics environment. Um, in particular here, um, you can see, okay, this is a fabricated sample and uh, see also the dimension of, uh, of the petals, which is eight millimeter in, in diameter, mounted on a small PCB uh, board. Um, this um, this um, graph here reports actually the comparison of the mechanical behavior of the um, device, of the physical device compared with simulation. Um, concerning the measurement, we uh, applied a white noise stimulus to a piezoelectric stage on which the device was mounted in such a way to enable some uh, resonance, mechanical uh, resonance of the structure. And we observed with a laser Doppler vibrometer the uh, evolution of displacement of the device. 
On the other hand, we uh, perform simulations uh, by applying a linear acceleration, and then we compare the two uh, the two uh, graphs of displacement. Of course, since we are in uh, different um, conditions concerning simulation, we uh, have, let's say this graph is just a way to see how uh, the model is able to predict the resonant modes, the frequencies at which the um, device resonates. Uh, but of course, the amplitude of the displacement is not comparable because we are in two completely different scenarios. So it is interesting to see how here uh, the, the model is able to predict quite accurately the modes which are happening in the low frequency of vibrations, uh, which means starting from 200 hertz up to a few kilohertz. Then we have some differences going up in frequency, but uh, I have also to say that it's quite difficult to find the proper way, both in the simulation as well as in the measurement, to apply a mechanical simulation which is able to, uh, let's say, to uh, highlight some resonant modes. So uh, since we are actually um, aiming at vibration, environmental vibration, below the kilohertz or below a few kilohertz, uh, this, uh, let's say, preliminary comparison is quite satisfactory for us. Okay, here just to um, give you an idea about how the mechanical strain is uh, uh, deployed on the surface of, uh, of the, um, the oscillator, the, of the resonator, you can see for different resonant frequencies how the modal simulations in ANSYS workbench are predicting uh, its distribution. So this means that in, in this colored area we can have, we can expect to have a good um, conversion uh, of energy from mechanical to electrical domain. Uh, on the other hand, these are some uh, um, uh, measurements uh, um, performed with the laser Doppler vibrometer of the displacement, vertical displacement of the of the petal at different frequencies. So you can actually see that we are able to have uh, different modes. Of course, uh, the modes are not all corresponding to the other one that I showed because uh, these are all uh, slightly uh, different designs concerning the dimension of the suspension and so on. But this actually proved uh, physically that uh, um, our device presents several resonant modes. So last slide is about uh, also a preliminary comparison of the power output. I have to say that um, in this case, the power that we observe is very low because actually we aim to have uh, uh, several microwatts of converted power. In this case, we observed a very low power, but this is just because actually the measurement setup was uh, uh, just uh, being developed and we managed to measure the device in a very low frequency, so out of resonance. And also the device is, uh, mm, coming out from the first uh, fabrication batch had some problem with aluminum nitride. It was quite leaky. And um, so um, let's say th the purpose of this graph is more to uh, validate the workbench tool for the, let's say, uh, couple field analysis also included the piezoelectric effect rather than validating the actual performance of the device, which is what actually we are doing currently. Okay, so this is the conclusion. Uh, I try to, let's say, frame the um, Internet of Things scenario for um, motivating the need for uh, wideband uh, miniaturized energy harvesting converters. So in this regard, I introduced the, our, um, our concept, design concept. And of course, the future work which is ongoing is to fully characterize the performance of the device and maybe optimize also the design towards the mechanical robustness of, uh, of the device. Okay, thanks for your attention.